A really useful skill to have if you're working with audio is knowing how to extract the envelope and the temporal fine structure. In this episode, we'll learn how to do this using Prot and what considerations we should take when doing it. To begin, let's just quickly get on the same page about what I mean by envelope and fine structure. The envelope is the slow overall change in sound intensity over time. It's as if you're discarding all the fine detail and just drawing an outline of the overall shape of the sound wave. But those details are obviously very important too, and we call them temporal fine structure, or TFS. Here we're zooming in to see the TFS. Obviously, the full sound wave has changes that are both very broad and envelope-y, and also very finely structured changes, and they're entangled together. The goal of this operation is to look at the envelope and the fine structure independently. We're going to give some more attention to the envelope. It's important for all sorts of linguistic information, like manner of articulation and voicing, it gives us prosody and tempo, and on an objective signal level, it gives us modulations. This could be useful if you're thinking from the perspective of the auditory system and want to create a modulation spectrum or encode changes in intensity. The mathematical description of the Hilbert transform is that we're rotating the Fourier components in complex space using this formula, but I don't know about all that. That's not how my mind normally operates. And then when I look at this illustration of the Hilbert transform in complex space, all I can think about is how it reminds me of a frosted cupcake. So let's simplify this. We have a speech sound here, and it just says, asa. What do we want? We want the envelope. And when do we want it? Sampled 1 over 44,100 seconds. Because it's not just a level, it's a time series. So what I'm about to show you is how you can get this information using Prot, using some scripts that I've posted down here on our GitHub page, why you shouldn't do it in the way that's visualized on the screen currently, and then how to do it the right way. Here we are in Prot, and we have our sound. Asa. And we want to use a script to extract the envelope. There are two different functions that I'll show you. The first one uses some native functions from within Prot that we can use to create an intensity tier, and the second one actually uses the analytical mathematical expression that Leha and Volker Delva put in their 2016 interspeech paper. First, let's use the native function. What I'm going to do is just copy this script right into my Prot new script window, and notice up at the top we have an example of how to run it. We're going to call fast Hilbert on the sound. And in this case, my sound is asa. I'll run the script, and now I have this envelope. And it looks pretty similar to what we would expect, right? If we look at the original sound, it basically has the shape that we see here. But you'll recall that the envelope usually doesn't have such finely structured changes, because we think of the envelope, at least in speech terms, as being the low-pass filtered version of this. So we can take this envelope, filter it, so that we're only passing between 0 and 50 hertz, with a very steep filter slope. So now we have our envelope, and this matches really well with what we saw in the original signal. Now we'll use the second function, which what it does is it actually runs through the math to create the analytical Hilbert decomposition, but it has a few extra features in here that I want to point out. The first is it splits the signal up into chunks. So this function of divide 32768 might look like a random number, but it's actually just 2 to the 15th. Dividing this into manageable chunks can let the computer run and analyze the sound more quickly. So what it does is divide it into digestible chunks, do the Hilbert transform, and then after it's done, sequence those chunks back together. So let's run this code. I'll paste it into our window here. And again, I'll just copy that example, put it up at the top. And again, our sound is asa. I'll run the code. And now we get two outputs. We get the envelope, and we also get the TFS. So the envelope, as you can imagine, looks pretty similar to what we had before. And in this case, 
uh, we actually get a much more detailed picture of the envelope, which again, what I want to do is filter so that it's only giving me things between 0 and 50 hertz. So we have our envelope here, and then we also have our TFS, the temporal fine structure. Notice here what's interesting is that what we see in the waveform is that it completely reaches the maximum and minimum going from 1 to minus 1 because what we've done is removed those overall intensity changes, leaving just the fine structure, which you can zoom into. And here we see really high frequency fine structure that corresponds to the S sound. And if we go farther in time, we can see the introduction of some of those low frequency components that we'd observe in the A ah vowel. If you're wondering why we're discussing two different ways to extract the envelope, here's why. Using the native intensity tier function in Prot is about 15% faster because it's already been optimized by Prot's creators, Paul Bursma and David Wienink. However, the custom Hilbert transformation code gives both envelope and temporal fine structure, and my personal opinion is that it's more clear exactly what's going on mathematically, but it's up to you which one you're more comfortable with. Now let's talk for a moment about how that's not really a realistic representation of what your auditory system would receive from the sound. If we open up that envelope, this represents the envelope of the full waveform, but at no place in the auditory system beyond the eardrum is the full waveform actually encoded. What the cochlea does is break down this signal into different frequency bands, and then each of those bands is decoded separately. Let's see what this means. What I've done here is just divide our ASA signal into eight different channels. This is actually fewer than what a typical ear would decompose, but this will just be easy to visualize on the screen. Now, the high band up here at number seven, as you can see, has a lot of energy in the middle of the utterance, and this is where the S is. And what this band is giving us is energy between, let's say, around 3200 and around 6500 hertz. So that's one frequency band, and then lower in our channel lineup, we have a frequency band that's much lower. It's between about 250 and about 850. And now we see almost no energy in the central part of the utterance. We see most of the energy at the ends where the vowels were. So this is a simplified representation of what the auditory system would do. As opposed to representing the envelope of the entire signal, first you extract particular frequency bands and then extract the envelope within that band. Now, as we have all these channels lined up, we can see what this looks like as we decompose it. As I combine these signals into stereo, I'll get rid of the spectrogram so we can see clearly that all these different channels have very different envelopes. And I'm using the syllable or the expression asa here because it shows really clear separation of where the vowels and the consonants are. For the vowels here at the beginning, at the end, channels 6, 5, and 4 are doing most of the heavy lifting, whereas for the S sound, it's really channel 1 and 2. So you can see that if we're decomposing the envelope, it looks very different depending on what frequency band you're talking about. And if we want to replicate some activity within the auditory system, it's good to decompose into these bands first. You can make some informed decisions about how many bands you want to extract, but you can use things like equivalent rectangular bandwidths or other kinds of estimates of auditory filter widths to get a start on that process. Here's an example of extracting the envelope and the temporal fine structure from all those different channels. So as you can see, channel four here, that envelope has a lot of energy where the vowels are and none where the consonant was. And here in channel seven, we have the exact opposite. One thing you might want to do is keep track of the different speeds and different levels of modulation you have in your utterance. So you might recall that we have this envelope for our ASA signal, and because this is a time series, we can do a few things with it. First, we can notice that this is being reported in voltage and not decibels. The way we can report it in decibels is just by converting it using a formula in prop. So first, I'm going to make a copy of it with a little decibel marker there to remind me what I'm doing, and I'll make a little formula. And the formula is 20 times log base 10 of that voltage value over 
this number here, which is just our small reference value for computing decibels for sound. I'll hit OK. And now we can notice, you know, even though we have a little bit of distortion at the beginning because we have some zero values, the rest of the val values we have here, as we can see, are reported in decibels from 50 down here to 38. So what we're seeing here from this minimum up here to this shoulder of this slope here, we're going from 55 on the top end to about 38 on the bottom end. So we have, you know, a 17 decibel uh, modulation there, which is good to keep track of. We can keep track of how deep that modulation depth goes, which could be useful in terms of distinguishing different sequences of sound. So what do we do with this to actually get that number? Well, we can do with it the same thing we do with a speech signal when we under want to understand the frequencies in it. We analyze the spectrum. So I'll take this sound. I'll go to spectrum, fast Fourier spectrum. And now we have a signal, a spectrum that looks almost empty, but if you look really closely, right down here at the lower end, we have some structure. And the reason why it's really confined to this lower end is that modulations in the envelope are very slow. And this should make sense because we actually filtered it so that it only kept modulations below 50 hertz, which is right where my cursor is now. So what this is giving us is information telling us that there's some modulation energy right here at about 7 hertz, and at some other parts of the signal as well. We've lost a little bit of fidelity here because we had a pretty slow signal, um, or a pretty short signal, but this gives you an impression of generally the kind of information you can get. We can do this with a whole sentence and get some more rich information. Now we're working with a whole sentence. It sounds like this. On the islands, the sea breeze is soft and mild. And we can use our code to get the envelope and temporal fine structure of that sentence. Now if we listen to the temporal fine structure by itself. On the islands, the sea breeze is soft and mild. You'll notice that you can still understand this, and there are some interesting reasons why this happens that I won't really get into in this video. What we're interested in is the envelope and the level of modulations we see. So I'll click the envelope, I'll filter it just the same way we've done before, filtering between 0 and 50 hertz. And this should remind you of the envelope we saw in the original signal. We have the sentence here, and we have the envelope. You can see that they're a pretty good match. So now our questions are, what are the rates and depths of the modulations we see in this envelope? I'll take that envelope. I'll perform a fast Fourier transform to get the spectrum. Zoom way down to where the modulations are. All right, and we can see right here, we have a peak right around four which should make sense because a typical speaking rate is about four syllables per second. So we should see a peak in the envelope about one every four to five to six uh, hertz because that's just the rate of modulation that we see. We see some other peaks down here at lower levels. Um, and uh, in general though, this gives us a pretty good starting place. You might wanna divide up the spectrum into very clean octave frequencies like one, two, four, eight, 16, 32 hertz, as done by Eric Gallen and Pam Souza in their classic 2008 paper, exploring the role of the modulation spectrum in phoneme recognition. In this paper, they're breaking down some of the same concepts we've discussed in this video, but with some really clear and clever illustrations. So for example, here, in this signal that has a modulation of one per second, you can see in the modulation spectrum, a big peak at one. Here, where we have four per second, we have a peak at four. So it's pretty clear to see from the modulation spectrum what kind, you know, what speed of modulations and what depth you have from your complex signal. These signals are obviously simpler than speech, but they do a good job of illustrating what the concept is that we're trying to understand. As it turns out, when you think about decomposing consonant utterances, like the one we've been working with, here we have ata, each consonant has its own very particular modulation spectrum, and that spectrum looks different depending on what frequency band you're centering it on. The modulation spectrum explains perceptual similarities and confusions between consonants. So although you can analyze the spectral details, the envelope, and various other 
phonetic based properties of sounds like formant transitions and things like that, as it turns out, uh, looking at an objective modulation spectrum does a lot of work in terms of explaining these perceptual results. So with all this in mind, I hope you'll be able to decompose your sounds into their envelope and fine structure. Whether you want to understand the analytical changes over time, or make images that illustrate the envelope in your paper or your book chapter, or maybe it's just that the Hilbert transform reminds you of the joy of eating cupcakes. Get your envelope and get it for free using Prop.